God is good, amen? amen. Oh, all the time, God is really good. Uh, even times when it seems that it's not so good, He is good, amen? I love this uh, one particular Bible verse, and it has become my one of my favorite. Not just my favorite because it sounds good, but because this is actually what I what I what I lean on to. It's found in Proverbs three verses five and six. Yes. I guess most of you have uh, have encountered this verse. Proverbs chapter three verses five and six. If you have your Bibles, would you please open it with me? And if you are there, please say Amen. 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 Oh. Amen. Amen. Right there, right away. For those of you who are still searching for it, please say, have mercy. <laughs> okay. So we'll wait a bit. So are, you, are we there now? Yes. Okay, praise God. So let's, let's read it all together. I'll be reading from New King James Version. Two, three, one, go. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And He shall direct thy paths. With that being said, let us kneel up for the prayer. Our great God, our dear loving Heavenly Father, it is such a joy and a privilege to bow before you. And to know that you are with us, for you have promised where two or three are gathered that you are in the midst of us. So for sure, dear Father, we are more than three. And we know that you are here. Because you have promised that. So Lord, please help us to have a sense of your presence. And Lord, I pray that uh, once again, hide me behind the shadow of your cross. That I will not be seen or be heard. But Jesus and Jesus alone be seen, be heard, be lifted up and exalted. Thank you so much, Lord, for what you have done. And thank you for what you're doing. And thank you so much for what you're about to do. Please pour upon us a full measure of your spirit. For we pray this in the loving name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So most of the time, when I share this testimony, people will ask me, Jem, how, how were you able to do it? And I tell them, you know what, it's easy. I said, why is it easy? And the only answer I say, it's easy because I'm not the one doing it, it's God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? The hard part is, is trusting Him. And most of the time, we, we, give, we give the verses, we memorize the verses, sometimes we sing a song, but the hardest person to convince is us or memorizing those verses, or singing those songs. So, one, one beautiful story in the Bible that I'm, that really inspired me, and I, I love about, what I love about Bible stories, what I love about, about stories in the Bible, it's given to us so that we will not commit the same mistakes over and over again. But sometimes we have to learn from our own mistakes, isn't it? Yeah. We have... We have to do it ourselves, but we don't have to. But we are slow learners, and I'm the chief of that slow learners. So one of the stories that really inspired me is the story of Jehoshaphat. Who well, among you here is inspired by that story? By the way, who is familiar with the name Jehoshaphat? Only a few? Okay, at least there's, there's quite a lot of people who knows in this church. Back in some other churches, when I say Jehoshaphat, they said Jehoshahu. <laughs> Actually, one particular story of Jehoshaphat that really inspired me was the choir. I love, I love hearing choir say, "I'm part of a choir before. I'm not a soloist." Praise God. <laughs> and one of the stories that really inspired me is that. They went into battle with a choir in front. So that really made me look into that story of that beautiful narrative. But before that, I'd like to I'd like to go back a bit to Second Chronicles chapter 17 and let us see how the Lord has been blessing Jehoshaphat. Because we know 
During this time, Judah was, uh, is, Israel has two kingdoms now, the north, the northern kingdom and Judah, and and I've seen the the sequence of events in the lives of this uh, of these kings. You will observe that if they are faithful to God, the Lord blesses them. And have you noticed something as well? That whenever the Bible mentions the king, it mentions the name of their mother. Huh? And it says, one of our pastors who shared this, he said, why is it mentioned the name of the mother? And then he told us, because the mother has the biggest influence in the lives of these kings. So sometimes it's not being advertised, but we know for a fact that mothers has a huge role in it, and also the father. So, and you will, you will also observe that when the father was a faithful king, the son would be a faithful king. So when the Lord says that he will bless, he will bless. So we'll, let's discover how, how blessed Jehoshaphat is. Uh, 2 Chronicles 17 verses 14, uh, verses 11. Verse 11, it says here, And some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat presents. Who are the Philistines? Friends or foes? Foes. And the Arabians brought him flocks, 7,000 7, and 700 rams, and 7,000 and 700 he goats. Just imagine, Arabians and Philistines. Arabians are friends or foes? Foes. What are the business? giving gifts to Jehoshaphat. They are afraid of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat's kingdom really went strong and they don't want Jehoshaphat to attack them. So it's a bit of a bribe. I will give you this gift so you will not fight us. And he says here, And Jehoshaphat waxed great exceedingly and built in Judah castles and cities of store. Just imagine this, that the gifts overflowed in the kingdom that he needs cities of store. So when we are faithful, for sure the Lord will fulfill his promise. Yeah. And let us count, let us count right now. Who loves math here? <laughs> Who loves adding their incomes? Raise your hands. <laughs> so let's add the income of Jehoshaphat right now. Okay, so the generals of Jehoshaphat here were mentioned. Adna, had 300,000. <coughs> How many men? 300,000. 300, Jehohanan had 280,000. Now, what's the total? 580. 580. And Amasiah had 200,000. They're good. <laughs> Eliada had 200,000. Like Whoa, there's a lot of mathematicians here, accountants. <laughs> Okay, last one. And Jehoshaphat had 180,000. A million and A million and 120. Oh, 160. Okay. <laughs> Kyle got the perfect answer. A million and 160,000 men. Is that a big army or what? It's huge, isn't it? A million and 160,000 men. Sometimes the blessings becomes a curse when we forget the blesser. And in the next chapter, a sad story, in chapter 18, I'll read here. Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance. And the next line was sad. And joined affinity with Ahab. Wow. Who blessed him? God. Who did he join affinity with? Who's Ahab, by the way? Can anyone Jezebel's remember? Husband. Jezebel's husband. Who is Jezebel? Mean woman. <laughs> mean woman. <laughs> Ahab is like the most wicked king. And Jezebel was the most wicked queen. Perfect combination. And if two wicked people combined, are they obvious enough to the people that they are wicked? And would you think that Jehoshaphat would notice that they are wicked? Of course he did, but he chose to join affinity 
with his kingdom. Why do you think that he joined affinity with his kingdom, with this, with Israel? Because he wants to be strengthened. He wants to lean on the power of this kingdom. And he forgot who is the person, who is the one blessing him. It was God. Aren't we sometimes like that? Yeah. Uh, when the Lord blesses us, sometimes we forget who is the one who is blessing us. I remember institutions, I remember schools, that when they are revived, when they are focusing on God and God alone, the Lord blesses and these institutions are being put as the head and not the tail. But what happens is, the moment the Lord blesses, the institution wants to maintain that power. So what do we do? We affiliate with the world. We connect affinity with the world. We want to meet the standard of the world. Our standard became so low. And that, that has been happening everywhere I go. And I've seen this happening over and over and over again. We want to please the world that we want to meet the standard of the world. But God wants us to go higher than the world. Amen? We are not made for this world. So why live for the standard of the world? It's so sad, isn't it? And it happened here in the life of Jehoshaphat. So, and somehow Ahab knows that uh, Jehoshaphat needs some, needs some encouragement to go on with a war with him. So he planned to go on a war against Syria. If you read the whole story, I will just summarize here. It will be like an assignment for you to read. Because you know what? Reading the stories is way, way, way better than, than any television show that you'll ever, that you'll ever experience. And so when they went to war here, Ahab somehow gave him a feast before proposing to, to Jehoshaphat. And he said, if you join in with me, with the, um, with, with the amount of armies that you have, combined with, uh, with my armies, we're unbeatable. So, and Jehoshaphat still has God's leading in his life. He said, let's ask first the Lord's, the Lord's uh, opinion on this. Make long story short, there was Micaiah, and Micaiah said, if you go to battle, if you go to war, you'll be scattered. You'll be like a sheep without a shepherd. And Ahab did not like that. He even warned Jehoshaphat, that prophet always prophesies bad things about me. <laughs> and the prophet does not lie. <laughs> and the prophet does not have a message of his own. He only gives the message that God wants him to give. And, and Ahab is like, is like a kid who's throwing tantrums, isn't he? Like he wants to do things his way, even though he's not doing the ways that the Lord is requiring him to do. So, and I could understand Ahab's action here. Because Ahab has been so focused much on himself and on the enemy. But I could not really understand Jehoshaphat's action. Because he's the one who asked for the counsel coming from the prophets. And now the prophet is telling him not to go. You will lose. But you know the whole story. He went into battle. Did you get that? He went into battle with, with Ahab. I could get, I could understand Ahab, but I could not understand Jehoshaphat while I was reading this. And now praise God for the spirit of prophecy. Amen? Amen. For the gift of the spirit of prophecy. That's why it's called the gift of the spirit of prophecy. You will not appreciate it, not unless you open it. <laughs> so, and... Prophets and Kings, chapter 15, page 196, paragraph 1. And this is, the chapter is entitled Jehoshaphat. It says here, listen to this. Jehoshaphat, the reason why Jehoshaphat still went into battle with, with Ahab is for this reason. Jehoshaphat had given his word of honor. We will be with thee in the war. And after making such a promise, he was reluctant to withdraw his forces. Wow. This speaks so much of, our, of ourselves, huh? Sometimes we are so afraid to back out of a compromising agreement because we don't want them to look bad. 
And we don't want ourselves to look bad in front of people. We are so willing, we are so willing to compromise the truth and disappoint God rather than our names be put down. Sad, isn't it? And then while I was looking at, at Jehoshaphat, I, I was thinking, oh, such a foolish decision. And then when I look back on my decisions before, I said, oh, I was worse than Jehoshaphat. So he went to battle. And if you read the whole story, it's so amazing because he even pretended. Jehoshaphat, uh, Ahab said to Jehoshaphat, you pretend to be the king. I will disguise myself friends, we could disguise ourselves. God could still identify us. Amen? Amen? God still could identify us even we shave our eyebrows and paint our faces. God could still pinpoint, that's you. Make long story short, he got hit by an arrow. Some will say that was a stray arrow. No, it was really pointed at him. And Jehoshaphat was cornered. If you read 2 Chronicles 18 verse 31, he was cornered by Syrians. And here it says here, It came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat and they said, It is the king of Israel. Therefore they compassed about him to fight. But Jehoshaphat cried out. Who did he cry out to? The Lord, the Lord that he abandoned. The Lord that he left behind. And the next line just really <laughs> warmed my heart. And the Lord helped him. Isn't this amazing? Yeah. We have been abandoning our God so many times. And the times that we, our back is against the wall, when we cry out, Lord, help me, right there and then the Lord is present. Isn't that a wonderful image of our God? And the Lord helped him. And God moved them to depart from him meaning the Lord delivered him. We have a beautiful, a wonderful, and amazing God. And most of the time, we only remember him in times of trouble. Yes. In times of planning, we forget him. We just go to him and say, Lord, I think this plan is so good. Bless this. Mm -hmm. We don't really come to him and, Lord, please teach me what to do. We just come to him, this is good, Lord. This is amazing. If you bless this, this will be so on point on everything. Yeah. And that was Jehoshaphat, and that was me. It says here, Signs of the Times, July 21, 1881, paragraph 10. The most complete and perfect system which men have ever devised, apart from the power and wisdom of God, will prove a failure. While the humble means which God sanctions must succeed, the simple act of blowing a blast upon the trumpet by the army of Joshua around Jericho, by Gideon's little band about the host of Midian, was made effectual through the power of God to overthrow the might of his enemies. Amen? Amen. Apart from the Lord, our plans are nothing. Apart from God, our plans are disasters. Okay. And I... I I went to the next paragraph. It's even more beautiful. It says here, The Lord can do but little for the children of men because they are so full of pride and vainglory. They exalt self, magnifying their own strength, learning and wisdom. And this one is a brilliant line. It is necessary for God to disappoint their hopes and frustrate their plans that they may learn to trust in Him alone. Can you say amen? amen? It is beautiful, isn't it? It is necessary for God. It is necessary for God to disappoint their hopes and frustrate their plans that they may learn to trust in Him alone. What is the title of our week's week of prayer again? Absolute Reliance. That's one thing that the Lord desires for each one of us. Amen? Amen. Absolute reliance not on you but on Him. Yes. Who among you here has been disappointed? Has been frustrated? Do not be shy. This is 
Okay, all of us. Like when, when I ask, who among you here has been disappointed and frustrated? You should ask, how many times do you want? <laughs> yeah. Those moments are God's ways of helping us realize, hey, Jem, I want you to rely on me. Not on your experience, not on your expertise, not on your gifts, not on your learning, not on your resources, and even the resources of your parents or resources of your friends or resources of other people. But sometimes when God blesses us, it is so easy for us to forget who's the one who's blessing us. And just to lean on the blessing or to lean on the experience or to lean on the successes and forget the God who is the source of everything. It says there, trust in the Lord with what? With all your heart. And what? The next line is powerful. Lean not on your own understanding. That's where we fail. We always Lean on our own understanding. But Lord, this is how it looks like. Yeah, it might look like that in front of you, but you don't know what's behind it. That's why the Lord is asking us, lean not on your own understanding. Those powerful, two powerful lines are so powerful that the third line is even forgotten most of the time. What does it say? In all your ways, Acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. My dear friends, if Jehoshaphat acknowledged God every step of the way, would he, would he be led and guided by God? He would be. If he acknowledged, if he would have acknowledged that all those blessings, the armies that have increased are only because of God, if he kept on reminding himself that, he would not have leaned on Ahab, if he kept on acknowledging God that his enemies are afraid of him not because of his force but because of the God that he served, he would not have taken confidence in Ahab. He would not have forgotten that God is his only confidence and not affiliating with all the kingdoms of this world. But God always gives us an allowance that we would somehow learn our mistakes. I remember one time I was asked to go for, for a mission trip and uh, that was a multiple mission trip. I'll go to like four or five different countries. I'll be facing like six immigration, immigration booths. Every time I face immigration booths before, my knees are beginning to shake. I don't know why. And you know what? Us Filipinos, we could not leave Philippines unless we have a return ticket. You know that? When we buy our, our tickets, we have to have a return ticket because the immigration officer would have to look at it for sure that, that you will return. You know why? Because Filipinos have this amazing ability to go in one country and disappear. <laughs> we are magicians. We go as a tourist, we end up missing in action. <laughs> Almost everybody, but Filipinos are really good at that. <laughs> So they make sure that we come back, so we have a return ticket. So during that time, I'm, I was asked to go to, to five different, different places, but the sponsor who, ba who bought my ticket forgot to purchase a return ticket. Now, during that day, I was just like thinking, Lord, I was asked for the previous trips. I was always asked for a return ticket. I don't know what's going to happen here. And remember, my, my deal with God is not to what? Not to ask people or not to borrow, not to let them know about my need. So I was tempted to call my, my sponsor like, hey, where's the return ticket? But then the Lord prompted me not to. So first trip, Kota Kinabalu, Malaysia. I was lining up and I saw some friends from my, from my hometown. By the way, this is Manila and Manila is like a plane ride away from the Philippines. You know, Philippines is, there's a lot of islands in the Philippines. We are like 7,107 islands. And I have not been to like 1,000 islands. So I will pass away and I'll never get to all the islands in the Philippines. So that's, that's quite a, a distance from our, from our hometown. It's, it's an hour plane ride. It's 
how many islands in between. So I was there and I was lining up and I saw from my university a swim coach who's a friend of mine and I told him, oh sir, you are here, where are you going? And then he said, I'm going to Kota Kinabalu, Malaysia. Oh, the same country that I'm going. And he's, he's a Christian. And I told him, sir, include me in your prayer. I said, why? I don't have a return ticket. I said, oh, Jem, you're in trouble. That's why include me in your prayers. <laughs> so we were lining up and I saw, and in the Philippines, it's, it's like here in, in the U.S., the immigration line is a snake line. In some other countries, you, you could choose which which immigration officer would you be standing in front with? So I was lining up and I'm thinking, oh Lord, I don't know what to say if, they, if he will ask me or she will ask me about my return ticket. And lo and behold, the family that was in front of me, the coach, the first thing that was asked was a return ticket. And I'm thinking, Lord, please help me. And I was leaning on God every moment, every breath that I just, just breathe out, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. And then there is a booth that opened up, another immigration booth. And that lady just asked me, excuse me, sir, come. So I was even more afraid because this is a special, special group of people's booth. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord. And now this lady asked me, oh, sir, where are you going? I said, Malaysia, ma'am. I said, oh, so what's your profession? And I told the lady, I'm, I'm a photographer. I did not tell her I'm a missionary because when you say sometimes a missionary, there's a lot more questions. And I'm not lying when I say I'm a photographer because I, almost, I, I was a photographer, but I did not tell her that I was retired. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then she asked me, what are you gonna do in Malaysia? And I said, oh, visit some friends and families, yeah, church families and friends. And then she just stamped my passport and then passed to me. And I said, thank you, Lord. I passed through. And then when we arrived in Malaysia, my neck was overstretched looking at the people on, on the conversation that they have with immigration officer. And this time, you could choose which officer are you lining, lining up with. And every one of them were asked for a return ticket. And it was my turn. I was just praying and praying to the Lord. And I was practicing my smile. I said, good evening, ma'am. And that lady was not even looking at my face. He just took my passport and stamped it and passed it to me. He said, two times in a row, Lord, thank you so much. I went through. Now my next trip was Indonesia. The moment I arrived in Indonesia, now the human factor came into play. I was sizing up the immigration officers. Like, who is the friendly-looking immigration <laughs> officer here? And then there was this little kid, I guess barely two years old or one year old. This kid just climbed and remember the counter of, of those uh, immigration officers that there's a little hole there? Mm -hmm. This kid like climbed and said, ah, wah, 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 wah. and the immigration officer began to laugh and said, that's my guy, I line up. <laughs> so I lined up in front of that guy. And then all of a sudden, like there was one person in front of me and before that person even went to the immigration officer, there's an immigration officer who came out of nowhere and said, you, transfer here. And I'm thinking, of all the people, why did he want me to transfer to the newly opened immigration officer? And this guy does not even smile. <laughs> and the person in front of me was a Japanese passport holder. Japanese passport holder are, are quite, Japan, Japan passport are quite strong. When you go to the U.S., you don't even have to apply for a U.S. visa. Philippine passport, <laughs> you have to apply. <laughs> so when, when that guy presented his passport, the immigration officer asked him, can I see your return ticket? And this guy was emptying his bag in front, in front of us. He was looking for his, for his return ticket. I'm thinking, oh, Lord, <laughs> what will I do? Next time, it's, it's me standing in front of this guy. And lo and behold, like after two minutes of scrambling, he found his ticket and he gave it to the immigration officer. And now I'm shaking, Lord, I, I really don't know what to say. I gave him my passport and I greeted him, good evening. And he just stamped my passport and then let me through. <laughs> said, Lord, this is amazing. I went to Singapore and Singapore, you know, Singapore is, is filled with Filipinos. If you took Filipinos out of Singapore, the economy would really go down. <laughs> 
almost everybody there is Filipino. So, and they're strict when it comes to, to Filipinos coming in because they have to be sure that you are not going there as, as a worker. You have to have your papers. So, same thing that happened, they let me through. And now from Singapore, I was, I was scheduled to fly to Bali, Indonesia. And now while I was riding in Bali, in the, in the plane, there was this guy who was sitting on the aisle, oh no, on, uh, in the middle seat, and his girlfriend was, was on uh, the window seat. And this guy asked me a question, and then he got to the point of asking me about my work. And then there was just like that, that bell that ring in my head, ding, 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 testimony time. <laughs> so all, all the time that we were in the plane, I was talking to him about, about my missionary work, and I don't even know if he was a Christian or not. But I told him at the end of our conversation, include me in your prayers. I said, why? I don't have a return ticket. I said, oh, Jim, it's quite strict here. I said, that's why I know. I've been here before. And they're, they're quite sick, so please pray for me. Now we're lining up. And quite a strange side that I saw. While we were lining up, I saw that all the Caucasians are on this side and all the Asians are on this side. I said, this is racial discrimination, huh? <laughs> so while we were lining up and... They're quite strict with the Asians. So now, I was standing in front of this stern-looking Balinese immigration officer, and then he asked me this question, Mr. Castor. And I said, yes, sir. How old are you? And then I said, 37, sir. I said, what? I said, why, sir? I said, all the while, I thought you're 27. <laughs> and I told him, Sir, you're so nice. You're my new best friend. He said, ha, 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 ha. He stopped my passport. <laughs> he let me through. And then while I was in the conveyor belt waiting for my bag, the guy who was, whom I met in, uh, in the plane, Ian, when he got to the immigration, he asked me, what did you say to that immigration officer? Why was he laughing so hard at you? And I said, he just asked for my age, and he could not believe that I'm 10 years, 10 years older. I said, why? What did you ask? I said, because I could not understand. He was so nice with you. And when I, it was my turn, he was quite strict with me. And then I begin to realize only God could make that happen. Yes. Amen? Amen? So I went back to the Philippines and I'm th saying, oh Lord, thank you so much. Two months later, I was scheduled again to go out to Singapore, I get a connecting flight, going back to Bali and then to Malaysia and back to the Philippines. And this time, same thing happened. No return ticket. And that, that time, I was, quite, I was quite at peace. And I'm thinking, okay, Lord, this happened before. It's, this is going to be a piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> and my flight, and my flight to, to Manila was 6 a.m. that morning. My arrival in Manila is 7. And my flight to Singapore is at 10. So I have three hours layover. And my sponsor heard about that testimony before, so she called me in. I said, Jem, I'm sorry, but uh, I was planning to book your return ticket, but the problem is the system here is quite down. There's like a storm here right now, and what I'm planning to do is the moment you land in Manila tomorrow, I will send you your return ticket, so you could present your return ticket there. So just just open your inbox when you arrive in Manila. You have three hours layover there. I said, okay, thank you. And at the back of my mind, it doesn't even have to be, to be right now. Like, I'll get through this. So make long story short, I arrived in Manila and I opened my laptop. Remember my laptop? That laptop that fell to the ground? And God taught me a lot of patience to that laptop because it boots up like five to 10 minutes. So when I opened that laptop, when I, when I checked my inbox, lo and behold, no return ticket. So I said, okay, I'll just, I'll just surf through the internet then. So I opened, I, I checked my Facebook. I went through to my Facebook and commented, ha, 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 LOL. And then later on, after, after a couple of hours, I checked my, my inbox again, still, no ticket. I said, okay, Lord, I'll just go and, and check in. It was like 35 minutes or 40 minutes before the flight. So I went in. Just in the checking counter, checked in counter, the lady asked me the question, sir, can I see your return ticket? This is not immigration officer yet. Sir, I want to see your, 
your uh, return ticket and I told her, I'm sorry because my sponsor was planning to to get me a return ticket, but the system was quite down. I said, but sir, you will have a hard time in the immigration officer if you don't have a return ticket. And I told the lady, don't worry, I've done this before. <laughs> like, I, I was still humble in telling her, don't worry, I've done this before, with a smile on my face. And I showed her my passport, look at this, I always come back. I don't stay, I don't overstay. So. The lady told me, but sir, I warn you, you'll have a hard time in the immigration. Let me handle that. So I went through, and I lined up. Remember the snake line? And I was practicing my smile. Good morning, ma'am. <laughs> now, I was standing in a middle-aged woman. Migration officer said, thank you, Lord, it's a woman. So now, it's, women are, are quite kind-hearted. So I was lining up, and I was smiling. Good morning, ma'am. And this lady was not even looking at me. The next question she asked was, return ticket, please. For the first time in a very long time, I heard those questions. <laughs> return ticket, and my heart began to pound. So, and I was still relaxed. I had so much peace during that day, so I carried on with the peace. And I told her, I'm sorry, ma'am, because blah, 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 blah. I, I told her with, with the situation. And then she, ans she answered me, I'm sorry I could not let you through without a return ticket. You have to produce one. The moment I heard that, it's just like all my peace was gone. And I went out of the immigration office trying to, trying to check my, my ticket. When I opened my laptop, remember how many minutes? Like five to ten minutes. And there's less than 30 minutes before the plane leaves. And when I opened, lo and behold, my dear friends, no return ticket. So I called my sponsor and my sponsor did not answer nine, ten times that I called. Later on, I found out that my sponsor overslept that day. <laughs> and no other way but, and, and I said to the Lord, Lord, what should I do here? I just closed my laptop and hoping to go back to the immigration line and hoping to end up with a different immigration officer. But sometimes God has a sense of humor. <laughs> Of all the immigration officers that I lined up, lo and behold, the Lord put me in front of the same woman. And then she asked me, you have a return ticket now? I said, no. I said, why are you lining up? I said, ma'am, I could not miss this flight. If I miss this flight to Singapore, I will miss my connecting flight. I will miss the next flight going to Bali. And then she said, okay, go to the immigration office. Go to those people. Have you seen those people? that is being led to the immigration office? Huh? They like, I feel like I was a criminal. So, and I was interrogated in that immigration office. And later on, the verdict was, you have to produce a return ticket. And I went out and I'm thinking, Lord, what should I do here? And we only have like 15 minutes to go. And friends, I checked, I checked the price of the return ticket it costs 5,400 pesos, not dollars, pesos. And that's like 120 US dollars. And I only have like 2,000 pesos in my pocket. And while I was walking, I prayed to the Lord, Lord, please help me what to do. I don't have time for lengthy prayers during that time. And I was running. And if you see me travel, <laughs> Brother Jed saw my bags. <laughs> And I don't travel light, my dear friends. And during the time I had my backpack, I had my camera bag, and I have a plastic bag. I look like a lost gypsy, my dear friends. And I was running in the airport and asking God, Lord, what do you want me to do? And the Lord somehow gave me that verse, use what's in your hands. I'm thinking, Lord, what's in my hands? It's not enough. It's just 2,000 pesos. And then I remember I have a small pocket during that time. And in the middle of my small pocket, I have a zipper. And in my zipper, that's my tight compartment. I'm thinking, oh Lord, I have some 2,500 pesos here. Can I use my tights? And the Lord did not give me peace. And when the Lord does not give us peace, it, not, it means to say that's not the Lord's idea, amen? <laughs> and I'm thinking, so Lord, what should I do? And I remember all of a sudden, I still have an ATM card. And inside my ATM card was another client's money which is 3,500 pesos, just barely enough, a, more, a little more than enough. And then I told the guy who's, 
who's making up the ticket, I told him, Sir, please book this ticket. And I gave him my passport. Pre-book this ticket. I just, I'll just withdraw and, and I will return to you. I went to the ATM machine, withdraw the 3,500. I gave him the 3,500 and look for the 2,000. Now I could not find the 2,000 pesos. I looked at my, my pockets and I always use cargo pants. So there's a lot of packets to check. I checked each and every pocket, nothing. And I was in panic right now. And I'm thinking, where could that be? And I asked the person, sir, kindly check at the passport. Maybe I have inserted the, the 2,000 pesos there. And I was just like, my voice was shaking. I was shaking. And the guy behind the counter said, sir, please calm down. You're making me nervous too. <laughs> my peace was gone. And my nerves became so contagious. And then I remember to open the compartment of tights. When I opened, because of my panic, I put the 2,000 pesos there. I gave him that amount, and the, the person gave me the printed ticket, and they said, sir, they called me. You have to run. The gate is about to close. I was running, my dear friends. When I passed through immigration, I, the woman looked at me and said, do you have the ticket? I said, here. I said, run, run. When I passed through security, the immigration people who, who interrogated me said, sir, you have to run. They're about to close the gate. And I was running. Friends, again, another challenge. The Lord put the gate at the last gate. So I was running like 100 meters. After 50 meters, I said, Lord, I could not do it anymore. I just have to walk now. And the moment I reached the plane, I went inside the plane and the door closed. The door closed at the moment I sat down. And while I was sitting down inside the plane, I asked God, Lord, why did you let me go through all this ordeal? <laughs> that in the end you will let me through. My back was so wet, my throat was so dry. And I'm thinking, Lord, please help me to know what lessons do you want me to learn through all this? And the Lord gave me this beautiful verse from Isaiah 26, verse 3. If you have your Bibles with you. That's one of my favorite verses now. Isaiah 26, verse 3. You there? Say amen. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because what because he trusted in thee and then I begin to realize my mind was not fully stayed on God my mind was stayed on my experience in my previous trips my mind was stayed on my sponsor my mind was stayed on the little bank account that I don't have that's not even mine. And the Lord took it all out. The Lord took everything. He pulled the rug under my feet. Why? Because He wants me, He wants my mind to rest fully on Him. Why? Because He wants me to have that perfect peace. That peace that passeth understanding. Isn't our God amazing? When I realized what he was doing, I could not help myself, but I just broke down. And when I looked back and I said, Lord, you did all those things just for me, just to get my attention. And that trip, I just rested on the Lord. and It was beautiful. And when I arrived in Singapore, my dear friends, I was so hungry. I was so hungry because of the early morning run in the airport. I have experienced amazing rays. It was not that beautiful. And, and the moment I, I set foot in Singapore, the moment I looked around, all I could think was food. And have you experienced that, that hunger that when you see food, you're about to cry? That was my experience. And I'm thinking, Lord, how am I going to survive? And, and praise God, Singapore, uh, immigration booth, they have this little bowl that has candies in it. And during that time, it was Mentos. So I asked the person who's uh, the immigration officer, and I asked, Sir, 
can I have some candy? He said, sure, that's for you. And I just waited for him to, to stamp my passport so that he'll be distracted and get a handful of, <laughs> of, of Mentos, put it in my pocket. And I was eating Mentos as my lunch. So I was walking and I'm thinking, Lord, this is amazing. It's just you, me, and Mentos. <laughs> and by the way, this testimony is not brought to you by Mentos. So I was eating the Mentos. And, and the thing is, Mentos melts in your mouth and in your stomach so fast. It's just water. And then when it melted, I was so hungry again. And I had like a three hour, four hour layover in Singapore. And now, the moment you get through their uh, pre boarding area, their pre boarding area does not have a bathroom. So remember, I was hungry, so I just have to drink and drink water. And my bladder is so small that it could not contain water. So I have to go to the bathroom. And I went to the bathroom like five or six times. And every time you leave the pre-boarding area, when you go back, you go back to those security check. And the security people are just looking at me suspiciously. <laughs> so I'm thinking, oh Lord, I don't want to be detained here just because of my bathroom breaks. So I stopped drinking. And when you stop drinking, your hunger is just emphasized. And I looked at people eating in the pre-boarding area. I was tempted to come and, and ask them, is that delicious? <laughs> but then the Lord said that his people will not beg. Amen? So I, I held my peace and I, I said, okay, I'll just drink water when I get in the plane. The moment I got in the plane, I was drinking water and keep on drinking. And I said, okay, I'll just sleep through this three hour and a half flight. But when I'm hungry, I could not sleep. Some people could not sleep when their, when their belly is full. I could sleep when my belly is full. But when my belly is hungry, I could not fall asleep. I was trying to fall asleep. And then the worst case scenario happened. The food cart came out. And you know, in Asian flights, the food smells so good. And when people begin opening up their, their foils, it smells so good. I'm thinking, Lord, this is a torture here. And I begin to imagine another, another ugly scenario. What if, what if this lady stops and serves the person next to the aisle that I'm sitting? So, Lord, this is going to be really, really hard. And this lady walks so slow. And I'm even thinking, Lord, please send Angel to push this lady fast <laughs> in the lane. And this lady stopped in our lane. And seriously asked the person. And this person pre-ordered a meal. So this lady served this, this person. And my heart was breaking. My tears were about to fall. And then another worst case scenario that I'm thinking, what if my seatmate ordered food and all of a sudden this lady turned towards our row it was just like a slow motion like <laughs> and then this lady opened her mouth and she said mr castor and said yes ma'am vegetarian fly lies i said yes i did not even realize that my sponsor pre-ordered a meal for me my dear friends, my whole body was shaking. I opened a retractable table and my hand, I was clasping it under the table and my whole hand was shaking. And when I opened the lid of that vegetarian fried rice, my dear friends, it smells so good that I could almost hear the angel sing, Hallelujah! <laughs> When I tasted this fried rice, this was the spiciest fried rice I've ever tasted. And I could not handle spicy food. But I did not care. I was so hungry. And it hit me. Wow. My peace that the Lord has given me before and during the flight was gone. Because I was just so focused on my present situation. My dear friends, it is easy for us to forget the goodness of God, isn't he? God is so good that he said, Jem, I'm not even done here yet. When we reach Bali, somehow I don't know what orchestrated all things, but the Lord, after the, after the convention that I attended, the Lord booked me in a Palm Plaza, the five-star hotel in Bali. And the Lord just gave me a statement. You have to trust me more. 
I have a lot of my sleeves. Stop limiting me. And then I begin to realize, oh Lord, please forgive me. It is so easy for us to lean on other things except God. We often forget God in all our ways. Acknowledge Him, and He shall direct our paths. My dear friends, my path would have been a smooth path, but I forgot to acknowledge Him. I acknowledge the experience. I acknowledge my sponsor, but I forgot to acknowledge the one who authored it all. It was Him. Amen? Amen. We often forget to fix our eyes upon the one, upon the one who has power to save us from all this. We often forget to fix our eyes upon the cross. And you know what? The more we fix our eyes upon Jesus, the more we will react in difficult situations like Jesus. Amen? Amen. And the reason why we react to situations the way we, wa- the way we keep on reacting is we are not changed into His image. I remember this beautiful quote before I close. I saw this quote in my spiritual parents' fridge, and I said, I want to copy that, and they gave it to me. It says here, Christ never murmured, never uttered discontent, displeasure, or resentment. The first line just spoke to me. That's not so me. He was never disheartened, discouraged, ruffled, or fretted. He was patient, calm, and self-possessed under the most exciting and trying circumstances. All his works were performed with a quiet dignity and ease, whatever commotion was around him. Isn't this amazing? Everyone around him was in panic, but he was so calm. Applause did not elate him. He feared not the threats of his enemies. He moved amid the world of excitement of violence and crime as the sun moves above the clouds. Human passions and commotions or trials were beneath him. He sailed like the sun above them all, yet he was not indifferent to the woes of men. His heart was ever touched with the sufferings and necessities of his brethren, as though he himself was the one afflicted. He had a calm inward joy, a peace that was serene. My dear friends, what consumes us? Again, going back to that question yesterday. Whatever is it that consumes us, it's either that thing will give us peace, will give us chaos. If all the things of this world are the things that consume us, we will never be at peace. But if God is the one who consumes us, we'll be consumed with His peace. Amen? Amen. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And let's not forget the last line. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. Don't you think that God is desperate to direct each and every path that we have? But just imagine how many times that the Lord has been frustrated again and again and again because we refuse to ask for His leading. We refuse to ask for His guidance because we think we know where we're going. We think we know what we're doing. My dear friends, acknowledge Him in all your ways and He shall direct your paths.